This podcast will provide an introduction to the use of e-portfolios at New Jersey Institute of Technology. In this podcast, Norbert Elliott and Blake Haggerty will provide a background on digital portfolios and show you how the showcases of student achievement may be organized and used. One of the best thinkers about e-portfolios is Kathleen Blake Yancey. In a June 2004 article in College Composition and Communication, she provided a fine exposition on the promises of digital portfolios, what we at NJIT refer to as e-portfolios. Yancey reminds us that a digital portfolio is more than simply an archive of student work. Yancey tells us that e-portfolios are web-sensible in nature, That is, they allow students to fully use the digital environment to present themselves and their abilities in various ways. Work in the general university requirements, in the major, creative work undertaken outside of courses, tasks from co-ops in the field, and volunteer work in the community. All may be presented in a digital portfolio. So a student may provide information for a variety of audiences, from peers to instructors to employers. Hence, we arrive at our basic definition. The NGIT ePortfolio is a digital expression of student achievement. Audience-centered in design, the portfolio affords students a unique opportunity to present a portrait of accomplishment. Here at NGIT, we have solid experiences in the use of ePortfolio. As Nancy Coppola and I have recorded in articles and book chapters, students enjoy working with faculty mentors to demonstrate their best work, and faculty are able to get to know the abilities of their students in very detailed ways, and thus the faculty are able to strengthen those abilities and direct student career paths. And when it comes to program review, e-portfolios are readily available, and they're there to help us describe and evaluate student accomplishments. From the point of view of the student, the e-portfolio is a digital display of accomplishment in the major, and it feels critical to success in the workplace, from the ability to write lucidly to the ability to execute project management. Because the e-portfolio is itself a form of new media, it also allows students to present their abilities in podcasts and in blog posts and collaborative wikis and digital narrative. Because there's such a wide range of artifacts that students can post to document their accomplishments, they're able to craft a unique persona of their talents, and that the student has a unique ability to apply mathematical problem solving, that student can then demonstrate that ability and upload it to the ePortfolio. If the student's an artist or a musician, then a PDF can be created of a drawing or an MP3 file can be used to showcase a performance. So then the e-portfolio becomes a demonstration of our better selves, of our very best work. In fact, if students wish to demonstrate their journeys, they can upload drafts of work and show how a final project emerged. Ultimately, then, the e-portfolio becomes a showcase for academic, extracurricular, and workplace skills. A senior project, volunteer work, co-op experiences, all can be documented in the e-portfolio. For faculty, the e-portfolio is a way to uniquely work with each student, both within and across classes. Faculty mentors can watch a student grow from course to course from year to year and suggest new artifacts of accomplishment that students might post to showcase their emerging talents. While most review of student work is either formative, in process, or summative, end of course, an e-portfolio allows students to blur these time-centered distinctions and work across courses and across semesters with faculty members. As well, the student doesn't have to be in the class or in the office for mentoring. The student can add content and the faculty can review it anytime, anywhere. Finally, the e-portfolio allows a process of continuous improvement to emerge in which students are always crafting their accomplishments. Because faculty members are sensitive to the demands of accreditation by regional and program agencies, the e-portfolio thus becomes a vehicle for outcomes assessment. The design of an e-portfolio is best understood as a design that addresses a set of core competencies. In the NGIT program in Science, Technology, and Society, 
Faculty members have drafted a set of central abilities that each student must have. Within and across courses, students thus work on seven key abilities. Leadership allows students to assume key roles in collaborative work, collaboration, ask students to demonstrate accuracy and efficiency in group settings, both online and traditional, STS analytics, in which students establish competency in drawing research conclusions through quantitative and qualitative analysis. Communication, both traditional and new media, asks students to articulate ideas lucidly, both orally and textually, through traditional forms of print and digital media. Information literacy, in which students define a research topic and the need for information and develop and implement effective search strategies. Now here at NJIT, in this particular core competency, we work closely with our colleagues in the Van Houten Library to ensure that all of our graduates have skills in citing sources, providing evidence of research ability, using sources appropriately, and integrating information skillfully into research. We ask students in their core competencies to have critical thinking to demonstrate a commitment to the intellectually disciplined processes of actively and skillfully, conceptually, analyzing, organizing, synthesizing, and evaluating information, and of course scholarship, in which we ask students to conduct an original research project that demonstrates the synthesis of core competencies of STS analytics, communication, information literacy, and critical thinking, and create a document that is publishable. As students progress across courses in pursuit of their Bachelor of Science degrees, they work with faculty to demonstrate their core competencies by uploading files and providing links to best work that documents their skills in these seven areas. Now let's take a look at a sample student ePortfolio. Michael Doro, a student in the STS program, has posted his portfolio in Mahara, the open source platform available to all NJIT students. As you can see, Michael has incorporated the seven core competencies in his ePortfolio as an organizing principle on the page. His STS Analytics core competency is demonstrated by a document from STS 304 writing about science, technology, and society. Here, Michael's provided a complex analysis of the history and origin of the concept of general intelligence. But if we scroll down to the very end of the paper, we can see that these documents can be used to fulfill multiple core competencies. Here, Michael is demonstrating his ability to search, retrieve, and document information literacy. His ability to handle new media is presented in his blog. Here we see Michael using both image and text to provide exposition of different ideas and themes that he's encountered over the course of a semester. To demonstrate the collaborative skill he's developed, Michael has posted a link and that will allow us to look at a wiki that he and his classmates have developed in STS 304. This wiki is designed to introduce students to the Mahara environment so that they too may begin to design their own unique profile of accomplishment through collaborative work. Now, the question of audience is important to the concept of an ePortfolio. And so now Blake Haggerty will provide an overview of the settings function of the platform. Thank you, Norbert. Mahara was designed not only to be an ePortfolio, but also a social networking tool. Just like Facebook, something our students spend a lot of time on, students will have the ability to work with Mahara to determine who will have access to their material. What exactly what they put public is going to be determined only by them. So Mahara gives the students the ability to create multiple portfolios based upon the different people that they want to reach out to. For example, a student may want to create a portfolio for a specific class project where the student showcases his or her work at the end of this course. In this case, the student could create a special portfolio just for that class and grant his or her instructor exclusive access to it. The instructor could then look at that work, communicate back to the student, and provide feedback on how that student's doing with that example. In another example, though, the student might want to do something like Michael did and showcase all of their work at the end of a program or the end of the, uh, their time at NJIT. They want to show everything related to the work that they did for their major. In this case, the portfolio could be made available to all NJIT faculty, students, as well as the general community. This could be the type of project that Norbert described where the whole world could see what that student did throughout their time at NJIT. Finally, a student might want to make a third portfolio. 
This would be the sort of thing that they could use when it comes time to look for a job. This would be what they would show to potential employers. In this case, they could create a portfolio designed to showcase their work related to the job that they're trying to apply for. In this case, they could make that work available to everyone in the world. Anyone could go, find out more about the student and what they did at NJIT. In addition to being able to specify access permissions, what we've done is set Mahara up so that they're defined groups that students could choose to become a part of. What we're hoping that students can do is use these groups to find other students with similar interests. They could locate other students' work, browse, get inspired, and then go and share their work with the group so that the cycle could continue. It's our hope that by putting students together with people with similar interests, we're going to be creating authentic communities, and we'll be able to use this group tool to do just that. We hope that you've enjoyed this brief introduction to ePortfolios at NJIT. While there are many ways of creating and maintaining digital representations of our accomplishment, we believe that Mahara will be a tool that will provide a user-friendly, efficient way to showcase our students' work. If you have any questions or comments about the concepts presented in this podcast, please do not hesitate to contact us here at NJIT.